We're continuing with solving mathematics in the movies, and today we're going to be looking at the film Mean Girls. So why did the limit not exist? Let's have a look into it. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently an Astrodynamics software engineer and I'm a Cambridge mathematics graduate. And today we're continuing with the solving mathematics in the movies and we're gonna look at why the limit did not exist. The limit does not exist. Okay, so this was the limit that was given in the question. And as always with limits, what we can do is we can just plug in some values straight away and see what we get. So if we substitute in zero, what we have is we have the natural log of one minus zero minus sine of zero all over one minus cosine squared of zero. Now, if we simplify this, what we end up with is log of one, or the natural log of one is zero. So we have zero minus sine of zero is zero over one minus one. So what we find is we have zero over zero, which does not mean the limit doesn't exist. It just means that it's currently undefined. So we've plugged in some values and we've, we see that this is quite a complex limit. So there are two ways that we can solve this limit. So we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule. Now L'Hopital's rule allows you to take limits that originally have indeterminate forms and then compute them through derivatives. So what L'Hopital's rule says is you can take a limit and if you take the derivative of the top and the bottom of the limit, you can evaluate that limit. We have here, the limit is x tends towards zero. We'll take the natural log of one minus x, which will give us minus one over one minus x, minus the differential of sine x, which is cos x. Now the denominator, we can do derivative of one, it's zero. And then if you remember that you can write cosine squared as this, we can do the chain rule so then when we do the differential, we'll do two multiplied by the value inside, which is cos x, multiplied by the differential of cos x, which is minus sin x. So that gives us one over one minus x minus cosine x all over two cosine x sin x. So now if we do the same thing and we plug in some values, we end up with one over minus one, minus one over zero, because we've just evaluated at x equals zero, what is this equation here? And this is what we get. So what we get again is we have, if you were to evaluate this limit, you get minus two over zero. So this therefore means that the limit either doesn't exist or is infinite. So what we can do is we can take one-sided limits and see where the function is approaching on either side of this limit. So if we take one-sided limits, what we can do is we can take the limit just above zero, then we have the limit as x tends towards zero plus, and again, we have the same form as before. Okay. Now what you'll notice is as we tend towards just a little bit above zero, this here approaches negative two as before and this here approaches zero but we want to, it's just above zero because if we evaluate sine of zero cos of zero is one and sine of zero is also zero but because we have zero just a bit above zero that approaches zero plus as well so what you can say from that is this limit here tends towards negative infinity now we can do the same with the other side. So if we copy this here, but we take it from the negative instead. So here we will take the negative. What we find is this here, as always, approaches negative two, so a finite value. And this here, because we are just below zero, approaches just below zero as well. So we have zero negative. And therefore, this limit approaches plus infinity. So what we can say is this limit itself approaches negative infinity from one side of zero and plus infinity from the other side, which means, therefore, this limit does not exist. As Katie says in the film, The limit never approaches anything. 
the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Okay, so that's the first way that we can evaluate this limit. The second way, so if I just say one L'Hopital's rule. Now the second way we can do is through a Taylor expansion. And all this is doing is taking the limit that we have and substituting in the values for the equivalent Taylor expansion for the different variables or the different terms in the limit. Now for the Taylor expansion, if we just write down the limit again, so the limit as x tends towards zero of the natural log one minus x minus sine x. Now, one thing you can know is one minus cosine squared x is actually the same as sine squared x. And that's just by the rule that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if you take the negative over to this side, you end up with sine squared. OK, so we can rewrite this denominator as sine squared x. So if we write this in terms of the Taylor expansion, what we end up getting is a negative out front here. This is the Taylor expansion for the natural log. And then this is the Taylor expansion for sine squared. Sorry, sine, not sine squared. And then over the denominator, we want the natural, we want the Taylor expansion for sine squared itself. So we will take the Taylor expansion of sine and then square it. Okay, now we can expand this out. Obviously we don't want infinite terms. We can expand it out and look at the leading order terms. If we do that and simplify, we end up with minus 2 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 6 plus more terms all over x minus x cubed over 3 plus more terms. Okay, now obviously we want to look at the leading order terms, so if we just remove those that aren't leading order, what we end up with here is we have minus 2 over x. So now we can do the limit, we can do the one-sided limits again and say that if we have uh, x tends towards 0 plus, then minus 2 over x tends towards negative infinity. And if x tends towards 0, negative, so just below 0, we have minus 2 over x tends towards plus infinity. And therefore, the limit does not exist, and that is because we have the limit approaching 2 different values at the point the limit is supposed to exist. Now the very final thing that I want to show you is just graphically how the graph looks and this question itself you don't really need to do all the maths behind it um, you can just look at the graph and say oh we can see that the limit therefore does not exist because it's approaching plus infinity and negative infinity but obviously most people can't look at this equation and just think of what the graph looks like. So this is what the graph looks like and you'll notice here we have as we have zero negative then it's approaching infinity and here when we have zero positive it's approaching negative infinity so around the zero point which is where the limit is supposed to exist it does not converge it, it diverges we have one sided limit is going one way and the other sided limit is going the other way so yeah, so that is the solution to why the limit itself does not exist. It's quite a nice problem. Graphically, obviously, you can just spot it straight away. But if you do it mathematically, there are some other things that you have to consider, like I've mentioned in the video. But yeah, if you have any film suggestion ideas for me to do some solving of the maths in the films, comment down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you all in the next one.